What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Light Source Engraving. Today, I've got a fun video for you. I'm going to show you my process for putting an image on a signet ring. Now, this signet ring, uh, when I received it, you think, oh, it's stainless steel. Well, what I found out is once you get through the first layer of the coating that's on the outside, when you're engraving it, it starts to smell like you're engraving, say, a gold-plated Henry rifle receiver or some other piece of pot metal that's just a hodgepodge of stuff. So it was a little tricky finding some settings that would actually get me a decent image on this pot metal that's underneath, underneath the nice chrome finish. So let me show you that again. So here we're going to be working with a size 9 signet ring. And it looks pretty and shiny, but underneath that, it's pot metal. So I'm going to go through some settings and my process using a 200 millimeter lens, 60 watt MOPA fiber laser. And unfortunately, my settings will require a MOPA because I'm using some higher frequencies or just a regular JPT because it has some higher frequencies. But I do think... Yeah, my main image setting, I adjust the Q-Pulse, so uh, we'll need a MOPA laser for the image setting. However, you spend a little time, figure out your own settings, you'll be good to go. This might be able to give you a starting point where you can start with a Q-Pulse of 200, which is your normal for non-MOPA, and then adjust your frequency or other settings accordingly to achieve the same result. So enough of that. Let's just jump into Lightburn, and I'm going to show you what I'm starting with. Because I have an image, and this image was just a little wallet-sized photo. So I actually scanned it with my Epson printer, and it's a printer scanner all in one. And I got a really good quality scan from it. So then I took that scan into Photoshop, removed the background, and ended up with the just a portrait of the two folks. Now, I'm making this for a lady whose husband has passed and she wanted to know if I could put a photo on a signet ring. And I said, of course I can. Having never done it before, it just took a little bit of figuring out uh, some tweaks on the settings and I think I got a pretty good result. So let me show you how I did it. So this is the picture that I scanned off the scanner. And then I took it into Photoshop and removed the background and ended up with this. So once I have this image, what I want to do now is trace the image and I'm going to fade it. And what I'm looking for is a nice solid outline. I don't care about the inner stuff. The only thing I'm really worried about is the outline. So we can adjust this and then actually come up with what is mostly the outline for the outside. It looks like everything's encompassed. So then I'm going to hit OK. Now that we have this outline, see there is some stuff still in the center. So I want to ungroup it. And then just grab that outline, move it out of the way. And anything else that was in the center, grab a hold of it and delete it. So we don't need any extra bits laying around on our screen. There, it's not selecting anything. So we're good. Now we can take this and line it up with our image and use this as our template for our base layer. I've measured the signet ring and I've already adjusted these to the perfect size. And you can see that is a height of 15.676. So I'm going to grab the outline plus the image and change those to a height of 15.6. And that should give me the same height as this one, and it does. All right, now that we have our image that we're working with and the outline, I'm going to hide the image just for a second so I can turn this into the black layer because that's what we're going to be using for our base 
our first passes and now I can show the image again I'm gonna grab the, both of them and group them together now I want to take a look at this image and see where the potential lie for errors so if I'm centering this image up on the signet ring and I'm using this bounding box that the image has it's not going to be centered because see we have this little area here that is not being engraved and then we also have this area up here that's not being engraved so to compensate for that what I'm going to do is go to see this line right here on the grid and grab now I'll grab that square that I just created and move it to the very edge and then move it as close to the top here and then I want to make that a tool layer so now I have this tool layer needs to be just a little bit wider and a little bit more here okay now I can frame this tool layer and I know exactly where that image is going to be and where to center it so now that I have all these I can actually oops get my selection tool group them all but then turn off the output for the fill of the image so that I only have this tool layer for framing. So when I frame this, the only thing that's going to frame is the tool layer, and I'll know that the image is going to be exactly where I want it. So that brings us to setup. How do I set up for this? What I'm going to be using today will be a drill press vise and here's an example of a soft jaw that I added to it and what that is is just a piece of cork and it's still there it's a little discolored over on this side but it's still thick and good right here and then I'll show you the other option that I'll sometimes do on this side I just cut a piece of leather and super glued it right to the jaw that way I have soft jaws on both sides and then at that point I just crank this in closer get it to a point where the ring will set inside of it and it doesn't really clamp down it just holds the ring in place you can use other methods to clamp down your ring um, one of the primary things that I will use is the Panavice Mini, which is this guy. If you saw it, you saw this before, I'm sure. But this is really nice for doing odd shaped objects and you can move it around and set it anywhere you want. However, when I'm using this, I don't have enough clearance on my tower using a 200 millimeter lens. So I opted to use the drill press vise. So then at that point, I just plop the ring down right in the vise give it a good look all around the edges to make sure that it's setting level in the bite what I'm going to be using today will be a drill press vise and here's an example of a soft jaw that I added to it and what that is is just a piece of cork it's still there it's a little discolored over on this side but it's still thick and good right here and then I'll show you the other option that I'll sometimes do on this side I just cut a piece of leather and super glued it right to the jaw that way I have soft jaws on both sides and then at that point I just crank this in closer get it to a point where the ring will set inside of it and it doesn't really clamp down it just holds the ring in place you can use other methods to clamp down your ring um, one of the primary things that I will use 
is the Panavice Mini, which is this guy. If you saw, you saw this before, I'm sure. But this is really nice for doing odd shaped objects and you can move around and set it anywhere you want. However, when I'm using this, I don't have enough clearance on my tower using a 200 millimeter lens. So I opted to use the drill press vise. So then at that point, I just plop the ring down right in the vise, give it a good look all around the edges to make sure that it's setting level in the vise. Now that we have our ring roughly where we think it needs to be, close to that center dot, I know it's not gonna be exactly where the center dot is due to my red light offset. I'm going to click frame. And we can see that it is not completely centered and could be a little off kilter. So let me take a look at that and adjust it. And once it's square, I'll nudge it while it's framing to line it up perfect. Actually, upon further inspection, that looks really good. It's like the same distance all the way around. So we're gonna go with that. Now let's jump back into light burn. And notice the order in which I have the layers. First is a fill layer. That will be the first to be engraved. As you can see here. And then, second is the image. So I'm going to run this first layer to lay down our base setting for our image. And what that's going to be is a light mark. So it's going to create the light areas of the image. Then when I run the image, I have it set with settings that will darken the pixels. So it's gonna run through and darken the image. So we have our base layer of, say, white, and our top layer of black. So we'll turn it white, and then we'll go back and fill it in with black and create our black and white image. For my white setting, this is slow, but it works with any laser. Just adjust the line interval to the lens you're using. And this is a speed of 750, frequency of 80 power of 30, Q pulse of 200. Line interval is 0 0.032 for my 200 millimeter lens. It's gonna start at a 45 degree angle, run eight passes with auto rotate on at 67 degrees. Then we'll get into the image setting. This is actually a setting that I use, and I call it fast black. This will achieve a nice dark mark on steel and it runs it pretty quickly compared to some of the other uh, anneal settings that I've saw. So we have a speed of 1500, power of 35, frequency of 200, Q pulse of 90. To get it very black, I use a line interval of 0 0.008. You can go higher depending on your laser, but 0 0.008 has worked well and it worked well for this image. And for the image, I'm using Atkinson. Now let me show you how I have the image set up. I bumped the contrast up, bumped the brightness up, and lowered the gamma. Used an enhanced radius of four and amount of 250. And I'm very happy with the way it's turned out just based on that preview. It looks identical to the preview. So now what we need to do is go ahead and click start and it will run through our base passes to create the nice light background and then it'll run the image setting to add the darks for our black and white image. Let's see, I am recording, I have the camera in focus. I do want to add a little more light. And at this point, we're ready to hit start. I'm going to frame it one more time just to make sure using our little framing box, our framing square. Okay, and it does look good. So now I'll just select them all, turn them all to output and show, and hit start. Hitting hard in our shot. Got the lasers burning. 
running hot, ain't ever gonna stop. Make it, veg, drop hits, watch it pop. We in the shop and we climbing to the top. Step up in the shop, it's about to go down. Got the light burn fired up, no messing around. Metal, wood, acrylic, watch me carve the crown. Design so sharp, make the haters frown. Spinning that rotary, getting that glass to clean. This ain't the dream, this works extreme. Light source videos, I'm running the scene. No limits to the hustle on this daily routine. It's light source hitting hard in our shop. Got the lasers burning hot, ain't ever gonna stop. Make it, veg, drop it, hits, watch it pop. We in the shop and we climbing to the top. We need a custom piece, yeah I'm on the case Laser so sharp I can etch your face Every vid I drop blowing up in no time Fans going crazy, this grind's all mine I'm slicing through wood, etching steel with skill Precision so sharp, gets the haters a chill Ain't him locked in, perfect real, no frills From the shop to the screen, I'm stacking up drills Light source hitting hard in our shot Got the lasers burning hot, ain't ever gonna stop Make it vids, drop it Watch it pop, we in the shop and we climbing to the top Need a custom 3D, you know where to come Lasers light it up, leave the competition numb Logos, names no doubt, I get it done Contents fire burning hotter than the sun Little bit of hustle, whole lot of fight Turn the camera on, we're working all night Alright, and just to reiterate, this particular metal smells like pot metal uh, If you've encountered it, you know that particular smell that it, it puts off when you're lasering it. All right, here's the ring that just came off the fiber laser, and it's a little warm, but let me get you a close up here. I have my overhead lights on, so it uh, might get washed out a little bit. Hopefully this helps you out. You've learned something about pot metal give you some starter settings that you can try to put an image on a ring yourself and that is all i have for you today thank you to my patrons and channel members for helping support the channel i greatly appreciate it don't forget to like and subscribe pretty please and as usual everyone have a great day and i will see you in the next one